to pull out your phone and text your neighbor and say, neighbor, the thing the devil thought would kill me is the very thing that God is using to keep me and it's pushing me closer to my destiny. Or what you being go through to obtain success has to be viewed as the price you're willing to pay to own your success. Or God began to deal with me and some of you were here when I preached on the subject of the dreamer. He began to reconcile success with dreams and told me that success has to begin with the dream. He said, however, if a dream was something that could be accomplished without hardships and hard work, it would not be called a dream. It would simply be called a reality. Uh, you didn't get it. Let me flash my light like men in black and take that back. In other words, God told me to tell you like this. He said, success is merely hard work disguised in nice clothes. It looks pretty on top of the surface, but if you're really going to have success, you've got to be ready for disappointments and hardships and ultimately put in the kind of hard work that's going to lead to the kind of victory that is the path to your ultimate success. But God told me to talk to real people and tell you that the greatest hindrance to our successes many times does not come from outside sources. But many times the hindrances come from within ourselves. Uh, because there are times when we want it bad but we're not willing to do what it takes in order to get it. Which means I may want it bad but obviously I don't want it bad enough. Because when I want it bad enough, I'm willing to do whatever I've got to do in order to get the results that I desire to get. There are times then when I become so anxious to receive the immediate gratification of success that I prematurely abandon the position that leads to the possession. Because God, I thought you should have delivered me by now. I thought you should have come through for me by now. Other people came after me and got their blessing before me. And I'm bitter and angry and upset. And I think the only option for me is to quit and walk away and be done with it once and for all. I text your neighbor, say, neighbor, I don't know what you got to do to tie a knot in your rope of hope, but quitting in this season is not an option. I don't care how difficult it becomes. I don't care how hard it may seem. You've got to keep on pushing and persevering until victory is the final end. God told me to talk to quitting people for just a moment. And we've got to discover this psychology behind the psychosis. A psychosis deals with the negative mental state or behavior. But then the psychology talks about the pattern and the rhythm of that translate from the mental into the physical. Of the question being is how can I one day want to do what God has called me to do? But the next day I feel like leaving it all behind. How am I up one day and down the next day? Why do I feel like a nut sometimes and then sometimes I don't? It's because the three major causes of quitting in the church, first of all, is burnout. We come in and we do so much, but we take in very little. And I want to talk to church members and workers and leaders for a moment. But the moment you start working without worshiping, your work will not last very long. You've got to find you an altar every day, and you got to get on your face before God, and you got to pray, God, if you don't help me do what I'm doing, I won't be able to do it effectively, and I won't do it very long. I know I'm about to cuss somebody out in the 21st century church, but the main ingredient to success 
in this hour is to develop a prayer life. We've got to learn how to talk to God again. We've got to learn how to get on my faces again and say, Father, I stretch my hand to thee. No other help I know. If thou would draw thyself from me, where shall I go? I wish Mary and Martha was here this morning. 